Do you want to know how you can not only slow down the rate of aging, but also make your entire body more efficient, like your brain, your heart, and for that matter, even your muscles, everything? Well, this is all down to using the correct fuel source. And it has to do with understanding a little bit more detail on what exactly metabolism is and why it's so important. Now, this is where we're gonna be talking about how eating nothing is actually can be quite healthy, as well as understanding some misconceptions about ketosis and ketoacidosis and exploring that in a lot more detail so you can understand what's going on. So first we have to explain what exactly is ketosis and what's the definition more specifically. Now the ketosis, to keep it really short, is pretty much just using fat as fuel and this is going to be dramatically different than using the alternative which is glucose. Now, just because fat can be used as fuel, there are factors that can affect it, which we will cover in this video, and you will be able to see how you can maximize ketosis and get the most out of it. Now, we have to understand what exactly the basics of metabolism are, and in order to do this, we're going to have to understand two main things. The first thing is the two types of energy production. So there are basically two main types. The first one is glycolysis, and glycolysis is pretty much just using glucose and turning it into pyruvate. Now, the second one is gluconeogenesis. Now, gluconeogenesis is not quite like glycolysis, it's the exact opposite, where instead it will actually turn pyruvate into glucose. Now, the second part about the basics of the metabolism is actually understanding why cells don't prefer to use glucose as the main fuel. Now, that might sound a little bit strange, but you'll see why. So the first reason has to do with the fact that most cells actually do prefer to use the fatty acid as fuel rather than glucose. And this has to do with a couple reasons, but one of them has to do with the amount of ATP made. Now, as you can see, the amount of ATP made by fatty acid is exorbitantly higher than the amount of ATP made from glucose. So yeah, if you can compare those two numbers, that is just one glucose molecule compared to one fatty acid. And this in this case would be palmitic acid. So once again, this is a really, really big energy difference. And ATP is exactly what your cell needs in order to actually do things. And it's basically the energy source. Your cells do like it. In fact, your brain loves it. And yes, this is because the brain absolutely prefers to use ketones whenever it can, and especially in a fasted state. And this is because if the brain has the choice between either glucose or ketones, it will primarily choose ketones. And this is very, very interesting because if the brain actually did want more glucose, it would produce it through gluconeogenesis. However, this does not happen. And this doesn't just apply to the brain, this applies to the heart as well, which once again, we will talk about that stuff later. But the second thing about cellular energy preferences that we're gonna have to talk about has to do with the fact that red blood cells actually prefer glucose because they actually can't use any sort of other fuel. And this is because they don't have a mitochondria and because they lack that ability of basically metabolizing uh, ketones and fatty acid, they cannot use fatty acid or ketones. And in this case, that means they have to use glucose. Now, there is a couple reasons why there is so many benefits to ketosis and gluconeogenesis, but the first one we're gonna be talking about has to do with the fact that there is reduced cellular damage. And this is a very, very big deal. Now, the reason there is reduced cellular damage has to do with the fact that when you go through glucose oxidation, you're actually causing more reactive oxygen species to be generated. And this is because specifically has to do with NADH being made. Now there is much, much more NADH being made in comparison to FADH2. Now this ratio is what determines basically how much electron leakage there will be. Now the higher this ratio is, basically in uh, the case of glucose oxidation, it is five to one. However, in fatty acid oxidation, it's actually two to one, which is very interesting. And this is because it's about 31 NADH, if I remember correctly, to 15 FADH2. Now this is a really big deal. Now what exactly is FADH, NADH, what is all this? Why is this so important? This is because during oxidative phosphorylation, specifically NADH will go to complex one as the electron carrier. 
and FADH2 will go to complex two as the electron carrier. Now this is a big deal. And the reason this is a big deal is because remember complex one always causes more reactive oxygen species to be generated because it is far more prone to electron leakage. And we don't want electron leakage because electron leakage leads to reactive oxygen species. The second benefit of gluconeogenesis and ketosis has to do with the fact that glycation is being lowered. And this is because blood glucose is actually going much, much lower. And this is very, very important, especially when we're trying to prevent glycation and damage to the endothelium or even preventing Alzheimer's. Yes. And that has to do with AGES and R-A-G-E-S, which is basically another way of saying advanced glycation end products. And you don't want these, especially in your brain, because these are really big problems. The reason glycation is a really big deal is because the glucose or the fructose for that matter will end up binding and rendering whatever it attaches to useless. And that is really, really damaging. Now the brain and the heart actually do prefer ketones. And you might say, well, how exactly do you know that the brain and the heart prefer ketones? Because these are pretty much, or you can even consider them to be the most vital organs in the human body. Now, the reason that we know this is because the brain will, once again, it uses ketones and primarily about 66% of the energy comes from ketones during your being in a fasted state. Now, the second thing has to do with the fact that if you look at a baby after pregnancy, then you will realize that their blood glucose is actually very low if you take their blood glucose. In fact, if you measure it, it is so low, it is around 35 milligrams per deciliter. Now that is so low to the point where it is three times lower than the average adult. And if a doctor were to see this result, they would immediately be called in because that person, whoever that is, usually is either about to die or is in a coma. However, babies don't wake up dead or in a coma very often. And this has to do with the fact that they are not using glucose as their primary energy source. They are using ketones and heavy, heavy amounts of ketones. And not only that, the heart as well does prefer ketones. In fact, it prefers every single other possible fuel source except glucose. It does not like glucose. And once again, why might this be? Well, it, that's because if we look at the cellular damage as well as preventing glycation, this would make a lot more sense. Now you might say, but ketoacidosis is really dangerous. And I mean, you will die because you'll have acidic blood. We already seen this in diabetic patients. So clearly there's something going on here. Well, this has to do with a 19th century misunderstanding about diabetic ketoacidosis. And yes, these diabetic patients did end up in a coma. And if we looked at their urine, we would see that they were absolutely flooded with ketones. So there was so many ketones. Now, ketoacidosis and ketosis are not the same thing. And there's a couple ways that we can prove this. One, we can look at the babies, or we can actually look at somebody who quite literally fasted for 382 days. Yes, that might sound absolutely absurd, but his name was Angus Barberi. Now, Angus Barberi fasted for literally a whole 382 days, which is absolutely insane and out of this world because not eating food for 382 days, I mean, I think you can probably relate to that. <laughs> Now, if ketoacidosis were true and would happen, then Angus Barberi should have ended up dying because ketones would have completely flooded his system and he would have died. However, he didn't. In fact, he was perfectly healthy by the end of it. And not only that, he ended up losing around 200 or pl even plus more pounds during this whole time. And this is because he was going through ketosis and he was using his fat as an energy source. Specifically, he was going through lipolysis. Now, how exactly can we achieve a fasted state without fasting? Is this even possible? Well, yes, it actually is. And this has to do with the insulin to glucagon ratio and understanding hormone sensitive lipase, which I have explained before. Now, the way that we would do this is we would actually have to eat meat and we would have to eat meat because meat has two things that make it very, very efficient at making ketosis work very well. First, it has to do with the fact that it has 
fat, and the second is that it has to do with the fact that it has protein. Now, doing this will allow glucagon to be stimulated very, very high, and this allows for hormone-sensitive lipase to really kick in and use the fat stores as energy. Now, in order to understand all of this and all of the science behind this, let's look at this from an analogy perspective. Imagine your body as a city with a unique power plant that can run on two types of fuel, coal, which is seen as carbohydrates in this case for your body, and natural gas, which is seen as fats by your body. Now, during the coal era and using a lot of coal, we would see that the city has been primarily using coal and stockpiling excess. Now, this is exactly what excess body fat looks like. Now, burning coal produces more pollution, which we can see as reactive oxygen species as damaging, and it leaves residue in the machinery, which we can also see as cellular damage, like ages, and specifically advanced glycation end products. Now we end up in the natural gas revolution, where suddenly the city decides to switch to natural gas and it basically is entering fasting or basically on a low carb diet. Now, when you actually end up going in a fasted state, your body ends up basically going through the natural gas revolution. And this is where your body decides to switch to natural gas and it enters fasting basically, or either a low carb diet, one of the two. Now, initially, the power plant struggles to adapt, which is otherwise known as keto flu, as you might have heard about, but soon, eventually, it becomes more efficient. Now, there are benefits to this switch, and it's the fact that the natural gas burns cleaner in this case. Basically, it produces less reactive oxygen species, and the city starts using its coal reserves, basically is going through fat loss, which is what we want. Now, the city's power plant machinery runs way more smoothly, which is basically what improved metabolic health is in this case. However, it doesn't stop there because in order to maintain this new system, we will need to continue to actually make sure that we're eating healthy. The way that we can do this is look, once again, our body is a city and it needs more natural gas. Basically, this is otherwise known as consuming fat, specifically out of meat if you can, and make sure it's saturated. Now, not only that, there will be regular maintenance being required. So for instance, this could be things like hydration, sleep, and nutrition, and occasionally a small amount of coal will need to be used. And this is exactly what your body does because it produces its own glucose through gluconeogenesis. Now, you might say, how do I apply all of this to my real life? Well, the way that you can do that is first by increasing the amount of carnitine. And this is because carnitine is essential for efficient ketosis. And this is because carnitine literally carries the long chain fatty acid to your mitochondria. And without carnitine, you can't basically metabolize that long chain fatty acid. So it, you, your body can either one, make it, or two, you can eat it. Now you can eat it and you can eat it in meat. So once again, this is where you can get your carnitine. Now the second key factor that you can apply to your real life is actually just time and the metabolic state, which basically is another way of saying, make sure that you aren't eating throughout the entire day. Because if you do eat through the entire day, especially if you add carbs, then you will definitely run into some problems. And this has to do with the fact that you will be constantly having this elevated level of insulin, which once again, we don't want if we want ketosis. Third thing that you can do is understand the importance of hormone sensitive lipase. Now, once again, this does apply to eating meat again. So the higher your glucagon is in comparison to insulin, meaning the glucagon to insulin to glucagon ratio is actually more glucagon favored, that would lead to you being able to actually burn more weight and not only burn more weight, you'll do it more efficiently as time goes on. The fourth thing is to drink enough water. And yes, this one is actually very understated. You need need to drink enough water. And the reason you need to drink enough water is because water is essential in every single uh, reaction that you can possibly think of. And without enough water, you will definitely run into a lot of problems. And once again, I cannot stress the importance of water. So do make sure you're drinking enough water. If you feel like you need to drink a little bit of water, then drink. Now the fifth and final main factor to helping ketosis actually work is has to do with the fact of whether or not your sleep quality is actually good or bad. Now sleep is very, very important for many reasons, but one of them has to do with the fact of hormone regulation. Now, if your hormones are out of whack, you're basically completely throwing this entire thing of ketosis under the rug and it won't end up working. 
Now, as a summary, there are five key takeaways. One, ketosis is a natural and safe metabolic state distinct from diabetic ketoacidosis. Two, the brain and heart prefer ketones and fatty acids over glucose. Three, fasting and low carbohydrate diets can improve metabolic health and reduce cellular damage. Four, gluconeogenesis allows for the body to produce necessary glucose without adding dietary carbs. And fifth, proper hydration, sleep, and nutrition are absolutely crucial for maintaining ketosis. Now, if you found this video interesting, then I recommend you check out my video on vitamin and mineral interactions, which are very, very crucial because you might say, well, meat doesn't have vitamin C or maybe even vitamin E, which you might need. And in this video, the vitamin and mineral interactions video, I explain all of that. So once again, thanks again for watching. If you found the video helpful, then please like, share, comment, and subscribe because it really does help the channel grow. And if you do want to see my videos ahead of time, then please click the join button down below where you can have access to my videos ahead of time. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Pew.